Hello everyone and welcome back to my true crime channel. I hope you're all well and having a great day. Well, no shock here guys, because Don Wells is back on YouTube doing another live video with Cher. Just when he tells us all, he's only going to give out written statements for his friends on YouTube to read out for him. He's back doing another live, thankfully not appearing on it in the toilet this time. But what I want to discuss today is all of the shocking things that Don said in the statement and why it raises huge red flags for me in his daughter's disappearance. So where to start? He said a lot of things that raised red flags for me. Not only was there a woman in the background telling him to get off the phone, some of the answers he gave to the questions being asked by Cher and the other people that she had on the live were really rather bizarre. So we'll start with the most bizarre, well, maybe not the most bizarre, but one of the very bizarre things he said. He claims he's heard the 911 tapes of the calls that him and Candace made. I find that highly suspicious. Personally, I do not believe that he's had access to them. I'm pretty certain that law enforcement don't give people that are persons of interest in a crime case or a crime investigation, especially a missing persons case, access to the 911 tapes, even if they themselves feature in the 911 call. I very much doubt Don's been given access to them. This is an ongoing investigation, so in my opinion, it's highly unlikely he would have access. I have heard from a couple of people now that work in 911 calls, that deal with the phone calls that come in, and they've said to me, quite a few of them now, there's no way that Don Wells has had access to them 911 calls. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a minute. But then, generally, I don't buy most things that Don Wells says. So, going back to that, Don was asked about whether Candace really went for a walk or whether he told the 911 call handler whether Candace had gone for a walk. He denied that Candace went for a walk, that he ever said Candace went for a walk, and weirdly, then came out with the statement and the clangor that he's heard the 911 tapes. Like I said, I don't believe it. I've often wondered, did Candace go for a walk? I personally think she might have done, although who knows? There's something definitely dodgy about the subject of whether or not Candace went for a walk on the day her daughter disappeared. So one of the statements he said that really stuck out for me, that really disturbed me when I heard it and I've taken a note of it, he was asked, was Summer feeling unwell on the day she disappeared? That's interesting because if Grandma really did speak out recently through one of her friends, apparently, she claimed that Summer was ill on the day she disappeared. Don said in response to being asked that, no, not at all. As in, no, Summer definitely wasn't ill the day she disappeared. Before anyone can ask him another question, he immediately after that says that he was at work all day when I got that phone call. This part of the conversation is around the 47 to 48 minute timestamp if you guys want to go back and listen to it. I'm not going to share it on my channel. It's not my work, so I don't want to be sharing it. But if you want to go back and listen to it, you can. But I find it really interesting that when he's asked whether his daughter was ill, he immediately followed up after saying no, not at all, so that he was at work all day. Very quickly, he says it very fast, the sentence, well, I was at work all day when I got that phone call. So not only does he tell us he was at work all day when he wasn't asked about being at work, he was asked whether his daughter was unwell that day, the day she disappeared, but yet he wants to tell us that he was at work all day. Why does Don Wells have the need to convince us of that? It doesn't sit well with me. I've looked at it again and again, and I've listened to it again and again. I've written it all down. Um, listen back to it, guys, because he says he was at work all that day, or I was at work all day, when I got that phone call. And the way he says that, that, <laughs> he emphasises the word that, almost as if it disgusts him, the phone call that he got which certainly gives you some food for thought, guys. It really does me. I'll leave my views on that to one side for now and perhaps tell you in another video what I think more on that because I've got to give it some more thought. But that's bizarre. Why, when you're asked if your daughter was unwell, 
did you decide, Don Wells, to speak about being at work all day? Why do you need to convince us that you were at work all day? I know why, because I don't think you were at work all day. So, interestingly, Don claims he didn't have an official lunch break on the day Summer disappeared. He also claimed that he couldn't remember what time he took a short break, which he kind of insinuated wasn't really a lunch break. He said he visited a dollar store to buy, I'm guessing, junk food. He said he can't remember what time he went. He doesn't have a lunch break at a set time every day. He just goes off somewhere when he's hungry. They even asked if he had a favourite restaurant or place to eat, which he didn't particularly give an answer to. He just mentioned going to the dollar store to buy food. But how weird that he can't remember the time. Doesn't sit well with me. Thought it was odd. And there's something not quite right about that. I think he did have a longer break. I do believe he went into work. But I definitely don't think he was there all day. Something else Don said is that he's convinced that Summer was snatched and thrown into a car. So he's still claiming the abduction theory. When asked about that by Cher, does he hope Summer is still alive? You know, does he cling on to hope that his daughter's still alive? He said he's always had hope for it, that he begs God every day for mercy to return her to him or to them, him and Candace. That's weird because in other interviews he has said he's already thinking that his daughter might be dead. And let's face it, he's often referred to Summer in the past tense as if she is dead. So one other thing I want to go over with you is when Don mentioned about Summer being snatched and thrown in a car and that that is his theory on what happened. Cher then asked him to speak out to whoever had his daughter. She didn't word it as an abductor. She just sort of said, let me know what you want to say to the person that took your daughter or has your daughter. He mumbled a load of old nothingness that I'm not even going to bother to repeat, but he didn't give a direct answer to start with. He pauses for a period of time and then he talks a load of old hooey. He doesn't say, I want to say to them people, where is my daughter? Bring my daughter home. Please don't harm my daughter. I'm begging you. Give me my daughter back. I'll do whatever it takes. Where was that? Where was the urgency for Summer? There wasn't any. In fact, he even said that he's previously spoken out to whoever might have his daughter as if there's no need to again. Really? <laughs> really, Don Wells? Is your daughter actually missing? Or do you actually know what happened to her? Because, unfortunately, I suspect that you do. So anyway, what did you take from that, guys? Did you think it was weird? Did you think Don came out with a lot of odd statements? Hafton to let us know that he was at work all day when he's asked whether his daughter was ill on the day she vanished. So many things he said didn't sit well with me, you know, that she's definitely been snatched and thrown in a car, but yet, as a father of a missing five-year-old girl, he doesn't want to plead with whoever has his daughter. He's already pleaded with them once before. So what's the point, was the impression I got. I found that really shocking, and to me, that is not the behaviour of an innocent person, an innocent parent of a missing child. So I've only gone through a few of the things that Don said in that live. It was an extremely long phone call. I am going to be listening to it many more times, taking more notes, but these are the initial things that I picked up from the call or the live video. So I wanted to let you know my thoughts on them now. But I will be back with you very soon, guys, to go over more that was weird from Don, more red flags from things he said during the live with Cher to give you my thoughts and views on them. But let me know what you think of the points that I've raised today. What do you think about Don claiming he's heard the 911 tapes? Like me, do you think it's a load of old BS as usual? Like most things that fly out of Don Wells' mouth? nothing that can be believed. What do you think about him not wanting to plead to whoever has his missing daughter? To me, that's probably so far the biggest red flag of all for Don from this interview. What do you think about Candace going for a walk? Or Candace not going for a walk? So weird. This is such a weird case. And as usual, 
it just keeps getting more bizarre by the day. So please pop your comments below guys. I love knowing your thoughts and views on this case. I love that we all discuss Summer in the comment section. It keeps her case alive. So many people have come up with great ideas as to what may or may not have happened to Summer in my comments. So keep leaving them for me. I love reading them and I love discussing this case with you all. I hope that one day Summer's going to be found safe. I pray for that little girl's safe return every day as I know you all do, and let's just hope soon there's going to be a break in the case. So by next week, I will have a longer statement analysis done of this live Don Dibouchere. I'm currently working on more statement analysis videos from the parents' very first interview together, and I'm going to get them out for you over the next week. I hope you've enjoyed my brief analysis of the latest live Don Wells has done. And as always, guys, I hope you're well. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. And as always, I'm going to be back with you all very soon for another true crime video. Bye for now.